Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm going to do a birthday layout that I have primarily designed in Cricut Design Space and I'm going to use the Cake Day papers that are in the March-April catalogue and this collection is so bright and fun. They have stickers, gorgeous papers that are of course double-sided, PML or pocket cards, digital files and also the dots and I'll put all the links for those below in the description. I really like this banner and I've added to it by using the offset feature so I can have a shadow background on that and I've done some manual cutting. You can do 12 inch cuts on Design Space but it is a bit tricky to do so I just find it easier when I want a 12 inch strip to use my trimmer. I've got a three inch strip of pattern paper and if you didn't want to have the wild berry for this you could easily flip that over and use different color tones to create a totally different look to the layout. But I love all these little icons for this and I haven't actually featured very much of our color of the year at all, which is Wild Berry. Beautiful purple, rich purple pink tone. And this is cut on the Cricut as well. And the drawing is done on the Cricut as well. So this is one big circle that I'm going to use the other side of this on the right page. So all of this is done on the Cricut with a big circle, the lines going around, and then the Cricut cuts this in half. So it's all ready to put onto the page. I have a five by seven photo, and I have more photos going on the right page. I have a title, so this one says birthday girl, and I'm going to put balloons on the page, and I'm going to show you a little trick with the font that I've used here, how to assemble the T. But before I start sticking everything down, I want to give some shimmer and some shine to these balloons. And I want to also add a little bit of texture to them. I'm going to bring in some scratch copy paper and do some stamping on this using the Perfectly Imperfect stamp set. You've seen me use this stamp set quite a few times if you've been watching along with all the videos that I've been doing. It has a lot of texture, style and almost watercolor type looks, some splotches. I love these little border elements that we can use and also the patterns. But what I wanted to do, rather than put a pattern onto the balloon because it is quite large and not necessarily have the patterns not all line up, I am just going to go around with this stamp and put that over the balloon to give it a little bit of texture and movement. And I'm going to do another treatment to this as well. And I'll do exactly the same treatment to the lemonade balloons, but you saw how quickly that all came together. Now this is something for this layout that I need to do first because there's drying time involved. So to make these sparkle even more, I'm going to treat them so they've got all this sparkle and shine with some stickles glitter gel. This is the moon dust. So because this is like a clear glitter gel, the colors will show through. And you may be wondering why bother stamping it? You could put that layer over top of that without doing the stamping, but I do like how the texture is coming through in these. It might not be picking up on camera and not as much with the lemonade, but it certainly does with the wild berry. When you use this gel, you always want to make sure that you keep this little piece over top and allow for drying time. So this is why when you're doing a layout like this, it's good to think ahead so that you can do this part and allow it time to dry. If you've done this and the ink is still quite fresh, you can get some bleed through. So it's up to you if you want to leave it for a little bit and let the ink absorb into the paper, or if you want to just go straight in and put the sparkle on there. And you can see all those little pieces just come out beautifully with the patterns. So I'm gonna clean up my mat, leave this aside to dry. I've already prepped all my other ones so that you don't have to watch all of that. And I'm just gonna make sure that that little sealer is on there properly. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna scrape some of this up 
and you can see that that's a bit pink. So I'm not going to put that back in the jar because I finished doing that those sort of tones and I don't want to contaminate it. But you can, if you haven't put it on top of any stamping, you can scrape those bits up and put them straight back into the little pot. I think out of all the glitter gels, this one's my favourite. So now I'm going to adhere the pieces for birthday and I said there was a little bit of a trick to it. For some reason, I do love this chunky style font and I'll put a link to that below so you can see which one it is. So for some reason, the T always cuts apart a little bit and I decided to use that as a little bit of a feature. So when you're peeling these sorts of things off the mat, you have to bear in mind what pieces you need to keep. So I'm just going to use the pick up tool and put the glue onto the piece and then while that is wet I can move that around until I get it into the position I want it to go in. Quite a lot of the time when I use the offset feature I have an overlay on them but I quite like this chunky letter so I just did the two layers with this one so that the letters fit inside. And then I just need to put together this banner piece and this banner piece lines up perfectly and I'm going to then adhere this directly onto that because I'm going to pop this one up totally on foam tape. So I'm not going to put foam tape on this piece. So I can set that aside to dry and while I'm working on this mat I need to adhere this balloon to the background piece. So I've done this this balloon in Cricut had the little tail already on it so I've cut that one apart so that I can put a tail on this one. The aqua glue is quite wet and because this has had quite a bit of treatment I've decided that I want to use this one. It's just personal choice. You can use whichever glue that you want to use. I've been quite generous with it and I'm just going to line that up and sit it underneath a block for it to all adhere. You'll notice that when you use the Stickles glitter gel on these pieces that you stamped, it does make the paper go a little bit thin because it's a wet medium and you're putting it onto, I haven't used watercolor type cardstock at all. I've just used regular cardstock. So it just needs a long time to dry. I usually give things a few hours or overnight before you can handle it again. It does dry quite well. It doesn't stay that thin sort of appearance when you're wiping it all on. It does harden back up again. And then by putting it onto a base like that, that makes it quite solid and quite firm. I've gone ahead and adhered some of this to the page. So there's a black strip, then the pattern and the circle. This balloon here, I've put off the edge a little bit. So I'm just going to trim that away with my scissors. And that's quite easy to do using the edge of the paper as a guide. I think it adds something extra to the pages sometimes if the embellishments come off the edge of the page. And I've put my photo mat on there and I've popped the birthday girl up on foam tape. I'm using up all the pieces from inside the slimline window shaker pieces. You get so much foam tape inside those when you've used the outside area for the frame. It's really, really handy. And before I adhere the other pieces, I've decided that I want to put a bit of a border across the bottom. So I'm bringing in the Cake Day scrapbooking stamp set that's got quite a few elements on here. I've actually used the cake and this sentiment on the right page, but I'm going to use this little border here of gifts to stamp across the bottom in Wildberry. So I'm just going to bring back my piece of scratch paper so that when I get to the edge it'll just go off there. I need Wildberry ink and I've adhered this to, this is a fabulous block, I love this size for border stamping. No more having to put the border on a smaller block and then keep going. This one is just perfect for these. And when I'm looking at this, I should have done this before I did my half circle, but I hadn't really intended to do this step. But I think I'll be right, and I'm sorry if my head's getting in the way here. I just need to put that up a bit so I can see. Sometimes it's really, really hard to line things up along the bottom if it's white on white. So here we go. Nothing like stamping on camera. 
Leave it there for just a little bit for the ink to absorb. And I'm just going to bring it along, ink it back up again and line it up. And once again, I'm sorry, I've brought this towards me. So hopefully my head's not getting in the way, but it does work better when you can get right over top of your project. I think that finishes things off really nicely. So now I can go ahead and adhere the rest of the pieces. I wanted to do that stamping before I put this hip hip array on. You can see I've got the foam squares there already, but these ones at the top, I haven't peeled off the top section because I've still to put my photo on there. And I do, I could have just put it on the bottom, but I do want a bit of support, but I want this to go across the bottom of the photo. These balloons are adhered straight with tape runner so using the dot roller and an all-purpose mat you can just roll it over the top of these strands and the dot adhesive only adheres to that part so you don't have to try and fiddle around and this one I peeled all the foam squares off so I've just got a scrap piece of paper here over top so I can line my balloon up and I'll still be able to put the photo and slide the photo underneath. So there's my left page. I'll bring in the right page and you can see how this is all coming together. There are a few things I haven't done yet, but I've already adhered the main parts of the page. So six by four photos for this. I've adhered this balloon with foam tape and this one I want to come with the strand coming out down the bottom. So I'm just going to snip that off. And then I will place this so that it's a little bit under this balloon here and right up to this black photo mat. These mats are an eighth of an inch. So if you cut your photo mat a quarter inch larger than your actual photo you'll get an eighth of an inch edge around them and the black i think works really really well against these patterns just going to get my tool out here so i can lift that a little bit and then have that strand coming down we heard there was cake is from the same stamp set that i just used so I think that would be really cool to have coming out here, out the side of this birthday cake. And I'm not gonna mat that in black because there's already enough black on there. And then I'll pop this up with some foam tape. I just want to quickly mention the Creative Design Team's membership group. I know I've mentioned it in the last couple of videos, but if you haven't caught those yet, I just wanted to let you know that the membership group is now open for registration and will be for a short while until the end of March. And then we're not opening it again for quite a few months. There are eight of us on the Creative Design Team and we all have different styles we use a lot of different mediums with video classes, weekly tip, and we also have monthly challenges and so much more. And we encourage everybody to share the projects that they're working on as well, so that we can see what you've been up to and hopefully learn like I am along the way with all the fabulous techniques and tricks that everybody has to offer. So here's the finished double page spread. I'm hoping the camera is picking up all of this beautiful sparkle and using the glitter gels because they have these extra little metallic and clear shiny pieces in them that add the beautiful texture. It just picks up the shine so much and gives gorgeous color when applied over top of cardstock and especially when it's been inked. I've added in a few little dots. So I've used the Cake Day dots, which is the first time I've used with this product because they have such a wide variety of colors. I've been using these on other projects as well. So they're a great addition to your craft arsenal because of the range. It's almost like a little rainbow there in and of itself. And I've also used some white dots from the black and white dots here. It just helps ground everything, just a few sprinkled around in groups. The addition of foam tape to the elements just gives a great lift 
to the page and I can't wait to get my photos onto here. I'm going to do my journaling along here and because these two photos I've purposefully left without anything over the top, I can add flip flaps to create more photo spots or I can use a Pocket Plus memory protector to add more photos and some more journaling in if I want to. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, happy crafting and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.